Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to take a look at the concept of half-life for first order reactions. You can do half-life for zero order and second order, but the equations are different. So we're going to confine ourselves in um, this video to just first order reactions and their half-lives. So in terms of our objectives, we finally are going to do half-life in this video. Half-life is illustrated in this graph. Um, for, for this particular graph, the half-life, which is uh, abbreviated T sub half, is going to be one minute long. If you'll notice how um, what's happening as time passes on this graph, we start off with a certain number of molecules in solution at time zero, and then after one minute has elapsed, we have fewer. If we were to actually count up here in this um, first beaker, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight molecules shown. And so after one minute has passed, we're down to having four molecules showing. Well, let's let another half-life elapse. So we're going to go now for this time period from one minute to two minutes, which is another one minute increment. And at the end of two minutes, we're down to just two molecules in the beaker. So we started this one minute increment with four molecules in the beaker, but now we're down to just two molecules. If we allow another minute to pass by, those two molecules will become just one. So the, the molecules in question here are going to be reactants. Um, so the reactant value gets cut in half each time a half-life passes by. So let's look at the definition for half-life. Half-life is defined as the time required for the concentration of a reactant substance to decrease to one half of its initial value. This question says, after three half-lives, what percentage of the initial reactant remains? Okay, so there are lots of different ways to go after problems like this. I kind of like to do these where we're talking about an integral number of half-lives to map it out this way. So let's go with concentration and time and I'm just going to make two rows in this table. When time first begins, so t equals zero, we are at 100% of our uh, reactant. After one half-life has passed by, so I guess I should label my time t sub one half. We're talking about how many half-lives there are. After one half-life has passed, that 100% has been reduced to 50. After another half-life goes by, that 50% will have been cut in half, which makes it 25%. After another half-life has gone by, then that 25% will be cut down to 12.5%. And if another half-life goes by, it will be cut down to 6.25%. And we could continue drawing this table on for as many half-lives as you wanted to go. Um, but our particular problem is asking us about three half-lives. So we're looking right here. After three half-lives have passed, 12.5% of our original amount remains. There is a mathematical formula that will link half-life and k. The derivation of this is given in your textbook, so if you're interested in how these formulas come about, I strongly recommend you go and read that. Uh, the half-life is given by the natural log of 2 divided by k. And if you were to run natural log of 2 through your calculator, you'd find that that number is 0.693. Um, this can be very helpful if you're working a problem and you need k, but they give you the half-life. You can use this to find k. If you do a little bit of algebra here, you'll see that k is equal to the natural log of 2 over the half-life. 
And then the next equation that I gave here is a rearrangement of the integrated rate law um, that's sometimes useful if you need to find how much stuff is left after some time has passed by. Um, a sub t is equal to a naught times e to the minus kt. So that rearrangement um, can be helpful. Remember the, the, our main equation for the integrated rate law for first order reaction is that the natural log of a sub t is equal to minus kt um, plus the natural log of a naught. And so um, that um, that equation um, can be used um, in its regular integrated rate law form, or it can be rearranged uh, to give you this form. And one other equation that can be derived from all of this um, is that the amount that you have left at time t, a sub t, will be equal to a naught times one half raised to the number of half-lives. So the number of half-lives just means uh, the elapsed time. Let me write that out over here. The number of half-lives um, will be equal to the elapsed time divided by the length of a single half-life, or t sub 1 half. And please remember that this is only valid for first order reactions. Um, this, all of these equations are derived from that first order integrated rate law, and you can derive similar expressions for zero order and second order. But for the purposes of this class, we're only going to look at first order for half-lives. This problem wants us to calculate the half-life for the previous problem, but I see I've rearranged my slides a little bit, and um, it's really not the previous problem. Uh, let's say the earlier problem that involved the gas phase rearrangement of CH3 and C. Um, when we worked through that problem using the tool that's found in the IGC textbook, we determined that um, the reaction was first order and the slope of the line of best fit, uh, let's see, the slope or the absolute value of the slope was uh, 2.0775 times 10 to the minus fourth. And um, we said, all right, the um, rate constant is equal to the absolute value of the slope. And going back and looking at the original data we were given, we can really only keep three sig figs. So we'll round this to 2.08 times 10 to the negative fourth. And because this is a first order reaction, it will have units of one over time. And I believe that the time unit on this problem was seconds. Okay, so the half-life is um, given by the natural log of two over K. And so it will be the natural log of two divided by 2.08 times 10 to the minus 4. And let me run that through my calculator. Uh, the natural log of 2 divided by 2.08 times 10 to the negative 4. And that works out to be 3.33 times 10 to the third seconds. So that's 3,330 seconds for the half-life. This example tells us that in another experiment on the gas phase rearrangement of CH3 and C at 215 degrees Celsius, the reaction started with 800 tor of CH3 and C. What was the pressure after 20,000 seconds? Right, this is an integrated rate law problem you can substitute in the time of 20,000 seconds. You can solve for A sub T. Um, but let's take this from the half-life approach. Right? We found in the previous calculation that the half-life for this reaction was 3,330 seconds. 
And so um, let's use the equation that says the concentration of A at time t is equal to A0 times 1 half raised to the number of half-lives. So we already know A0. A0 is 800 tor. And we know the time. The time is 20,000 seconds. So we just need to figure out what the number of half-lives is. Um, so the number of half-lives will be that 20 second, 20,000 seconds divided by the 3,330 uh, seconds. So let's see. That works out to be uh, 6.00, so that's really right at six half-lives. So for A0, we're going to plug in 800, and then we're going to multiply that by one half raised to the sixth power. So I'm going to take 0.5 and raise that to the sixth power, and then multiply that times 800. I'm going to end up with a value of 12.5 uh, tor. All right, so our big objective for this section was to look at the concept of half-life. It's applied to a first-order reaction.